Yes, you guys, welcome back. I'm Nini FC. This is Blue Lions TV, and today we have some more transfer updates that we have to discuss. Now, uh, but the stories today is a little bit different. I'm going to be reporting off stories from the London is Blue podcast because they had on Matt Law, who provided a lot of insight behind some of the latest stories happening right now. Um, today's video, I'm going to discuss some of the updates on your Lukaku's, your Rices, etc., etc. For the second part, we'll be discussing. Adama Traore and for the third part we're going to discuss Joaquin Marla from Atalanta so there's a ton to break down and discuss you guys but before I get into anything though I want to just quickly say of course because I'm reporting on a story from the Londoners Blue podcast it's only fair that I, I gotta shout them out that's only the right thing to do um, of course I've known these guys very good guys you know very humble very hard working and very ambitious hence the, how the podcast keeps growing and growing and growing um as i said you guys are going to find a link below to all their great work in the description and to their youtube channel in the card above as well so you guys show us some love because it's nice to know that you know it, it, it's just like ordinary normal fans who one day decided you know what i'm gonna do this podcast i'm gonna do this website i'm gonna do this youtube channel and you know the positions they put themselves in just because of the love for the club hey for me it's the type of stories i like so if you like today's video you guys show us some love and before i get into anything though i need to get one quick plug out of the way first today's video is brought to you by one football and by now if you have not downloaded the app then my brother i don't understand why you haven't like there's no excuses we have the transfer though we have the Euros, and with one football, as you guys can see on the screen beside me, this is the perfect hub to get all the information you want directly on your phone instantly. They have their amazing Euro hub, they have their Transmundo hub as well. And of course, if you want more specific news, you can use their follow feature, follow the player or club of your choosing, and get all the latest news updates and info on your phone automatically. So you guys, I'm here to hook you up. If you guys wanna support the channel too, go to the description, download the app, and do yourself a favor, my brother. So, you know, we start things off by discussing the latest London and Blue podcast with Matt Law. Um, you know, we got more insight behind the scenes in regards to your Lukaku's, your Rubens, etc., etc. I'm going to focus on some of the interesting points from that podcast, of course. And, you know, one that I've been reiterating for a while too, and one that Matt Law said himself is that the deal for Lukaku is not necessarily over. Of course, if we can't sign Horn in the end and something terrible happens with that deal, we need to sign a big name striker. And I'd imagine that the money we'd look to put in for Haaland would just be redirected back to Lukaku. I mean, with the news su suggesting that Inter Milan are happy to sell him if he is sold for the correct fee. And with news supporting the fact that Inter Milan could also still sell Arturo Martinez. You know, it comes down to, again, if you want Lukaku, prove and show it to him why you do. Put the money up, make him your highest paid player as well, and really show why you're serious about him. That, that's what it comes down to. And of course, the best way to do this is by coming in with an official bid. And this actually follows on nicely to the latest surrounding Declan Rice. Now, as it's been known for a while, Tuchel is a big fan and a big admirer. Um, for me, I think the main reasons behind this, and it's the main reason why we are seeing more of a back three setup compared to a 4 3 3, is that you need to have the correct DM behind your midfield players. To play that system properly and you know under Lampard even though I understood it there was too much stress put on N'Golo Kante to have to fill that run out by himself and with N'Golo Kante's injuries on top of that too it meant like there wasn't going to be too much life for that formation so of course with Declan Rice being signed a player that can play in a two can play in a three can uh, give you more tactical variations and possibilities too I can completely see why Tuchel would want that and and I think, you know, uh, one of those intangible things in football that no one really cares about, but they still play a massive part for a squad, is that he's very well respected and is very popular with the teammates already. I think it's that simple. Um, you know, he knows the club already. He's dreaming to sign for us and Rice won't be disrespecting West Ham at all. Unless we put in an official bid. That is what everyone's waiting for. Rice can take it from there because he's not going to disrespect West Ham, a club that picked him up when Chelsea discarded him a club that made him their captain and have really invested in him heavily over his years you know it says a lot about Declan's character that he values that and will still respect the club even if they prove difficult to negotiate with because we know that West Ham they've slapped on that 100 million fee however though it does seem like potentially they might be softening their stance on that just egregious ridiculous fee um for me Rice makes a lot of sense in our midfields, as we saw in the recent game against Germany. You know, this guy can play against top mids 
He's a top player in the making. Um, you know, he, he plays with so much intelligence. He's, he's so quick and, you know, I feel like he is the right profile we need in our midfields. And to be honest, even though I'd actually prefer Tremeni because I, I like him a lot too, uh, of course, a much cheaper as well compared to Declan Rice. For me, as I keep saying, they're still the same profile of players. So either one, I'm happy with, you know what I mean? Um, but of course, to continue on, we have some smaller updates on Ruben, of course. Tuchel is really interested in Ruben. He wants to watch him closely this preseason and, you know, for very good reason, you know, Ruben can play further forward up and of course, as an option in midfield as well. Um, again, we have an excellent squad, great loan players. I like that Tuchel wants to give fair opportunities and chances to fully assess before we dip our toes in the market because we're not looking to sign five, six players, literally three, four max. So let's see what happens there. Now we move on to the second story, which segues in nicely to the first story. And we're gonna discuss more news surrounding Adama Traore. Uh, of course, Adama was brought up again in the Londoners Blue podcast featuring Matt Law. And you know, the reality is Adama has been part of our scouting list on the short list for, for many, many years, stretching all the way back to when Adama was playing for Middlesbrough. On top of this, Tuchel is a big fan of the player as well. And to be honest, I can definitely exactly see why Tuchel would want Adama in his team. Now, you know, to explain this, let's actually look at the Euros. Now, we have seen that back three systems have become extremely popular. And I think one thing we can notice as Chelsea fans, you know, fans that have been blessed to see maybe, you know, two managers who have used that system formation to like the very best that we've seen is that a lot of other clubs and nations don't have that same solidity, that same type of structure and understanding behind how they play it compared to what Tuchel and, and others have brought to the team. But, you know, sticking with Tuchel, for me, I get why Adama would be the guy. Now, when we play as a team, the right wing back really gets forward, really stretches up, really goes uh, goes and attacks. And essentially, you know, we kind of transition from a back three system into like a 4-2-3-1. Because remember, the right side of centre back, he pushes further forward to fill up the vacated fullback area. And, you know, in a sense, this is how Adama plays his best game. You know, he's always been a player that receives on the halfway line. He has to use his great pace over distances, acceleration. And, you know, as I keep saying, I feel like the wing back role has become like a revamped one now for old school wingers. You know, wingers back in the day who, you know, were more athletic, had to be able to run great distances. And, you know, of course, they've been pushed out the game now with players playing more in field, playing more in the half spaces, etc., etc. However, they found more life playing as wing backs for teams. And, you know, I definitely think that Adama would be a great signing in that sense. But at the same time, I cannot help but feel when we have Liv Romento already, who is of high, high potential, it's not just like some floating right now. We deep the fact that Adama realistically could be getting what, maybe 30 to 35 games next season. Would that not be better off giving that game time to Liv Romento, who could really exponentially improve a lot more from that compared to an Adama? Uh, for me, I think there's this myth when it comes to introducing young players where it's like, it's a lottery ticket, you can never really trust them, um, you know, we've got no frame of reference so how do we know they can step up and obviously play in the big divisions um for me we've seen a long history of players more academy easily play in this league so i think that should just give us uh all the confidence we need in that and also at the same time as well i think it comes down to two things that you know young players of high potential not just any young players need to really succeed and fulfill that i think number one growing into your physique is a big thing Livermanso is already six foot plus. He's a tall guy, very strong, very fast. But as he gets more athletic, as we've seen the transformation of Mason Mount from what, two years ago to how he is right now, we're seeing a better player from that. And of course, for the second reason to you guys, for me, it does come down to experience. Um, end of the day, the ball is round. Sometimes it's going to bounce in certain areas. It's going to be mad. And, you know, you need to have that frame of reference a player can fall back to which is that experience of knowing how to deal with the ball in certain moments and situations. It could be dealing against certain players, certain this, that, that. For me, that doesn't necessarily demonstrate the skill or the ability of a player because you need to have the skill and ability first, even, you know, be given chances in the first team. I just think that these are things that can be managed, that can be worked upon. And maybe if we're saving that, you know, the potential 25 million, because as Matt Lord did state, a Dharma could cost around 25 to 30 million in that sense. 
I don't know, could that not be better used for other positions? Or maybe being used to help get this Horton deal sealed and gone through? I don't know, that's my thoughts and opinions behind this. But at the same time, you know, I think Adama's a great player, very fun. Um, you guys know my thoughts behind just using it Ramon, so I can't say it all the time. But at the same time, this doesn't mean that I think the links to Hakimi and Adama are stupid and these guys are crap and the club this, club that. You know, at the same time, you know, sometimes you just have to accept that. <laughs> The club's gonna do what they wanna do. So that's the Adama story out of the way. And now we end things with the final story today and we turn our attention to Atalanta's Danish wing back who's been doing bits in the Euro so far and that is Baki Male. Um, reports from Italy coming from Toto Atalanta are suggesting that Arsene Paz and Germain are keeping close eyes and attention on Mahler after his amazing displays in the Euro so far. Um, he's not the only player being looked at. Damsgaard is another player being looked at as well. He's also having a very impressive tournament. And, you know, this Danish team actually look like a team. They look strong. They look cohesive. They look united. And they look like they, they fully understand how to play with each other and what they need to do. But uh, let's go back to Marlon now because, you know, he is a very interesting player. He's a guy that can play down the left-hand side and the right-hand side. You know, naturally, that makes sense. He was signed as a replacement for Castagna, who signed for Leicester City last summer. And, you know, one of the great qualities about Marla, as I'm sure you guys have seen too already, is his engine. I mean, this guy is so fast, such a powerful runner, um, you know, such an athlete. Um, yeah, literally like the, the definition of pace and power. And I think pace and power, you want to kind of have that in your, in, in your full-backs and your wing-backs, ideally, because... They have to play in both halves and with Mahler, what makes him very interesting and doesn't surprise me why he would be part of the shortlist is that he's a player that has a impressive progressive runs. I mean, he's constantly looking to bomb forward, constantly looking to take his man on. He has the pacer running behind and he has that recovery pace too. And yeah, of course, he's not like the most spectacular defensively, but with our system, with how we play, it, it does come down to the collective. It comes down to the team and how they all unite together and follow the instructions set by Thomas Tuchel. So, you know, how the team defends is more important than how individuals defend. And I'm just getting this impression that maybe Tuchel sees having a more advanced attacking wing back as uh, a better solution against teams that park the bus and sit deep. Um, that would be interesting to see. I guess we'll we'll find out but um I don't know I don't know I think Marla he's not necessarily a first team site Atalanta but at the same time too you have to be um teams with their fullbacks and their wingbacks they like to have depth there uh the more rotation positions instead of being like clear you know number ones and number twos and you know you still got good game time throughout the season um of course competing against Gosens and hate over it's not going to be easy for anyone but you know he's still been doing his thing in Italian football and you know he's definitely a player that shows that you know, there could be potentially more to him as time does go on. Yeah, it's an interesting story, you guys. Marla, good player. Is he worth the money though? I'm not too sure because he only recently signed from, from Genk to Atalanta. They're going to command a ton of money now, especially a Euro 2020 premium. Would that necessarily be worth it? I'm not too sure, to be honest, especially if Adama realistically would cost less money now then what Marla could potentially be in the market. So there you guys have it. They were the three stories out of the way first. Hope you guys have enjoyed. And on that note, I'm in EFC. This is Blue Lions TV. I'll catch you guys later with some more videos. Cool.